Podium. We're back. I like this hook. You got a book you want to tell us about? Well, let's talk. There's no other place to do it. I want a young cast the craze. Cast the craze. Welcome to Cast and Craze Podcast. I am your host with the most, Sam Creeks, Ben Vera, and I am with... Huh. George, the dreamer. Say what? The dreamer. What you gonna do, George? Yo, wh- why you gotta talk right in the middle of my introduction? Bro? You killed my whole <laughs> name introduction. Don't know who I am now. All right, let's do it again. And I'm with... <laughs> we're, we're, we're good. Oh. George. Word, what's up? You about to stand up and start doing some b boy stuff? What's going on, George? Over there, huh? What up? What up, man? I'm drinking my tea concoction. You know, it's a little weird because I can't hear the intro, so I don't know when you're on. I know you said we're gonna we're about to start, but I can't hear the intro. I can't hear any music. No. No, which is fine. You heard it. it, is it Didn't you hear it the other day? Nope. Without I just watch you. Oh, you yeah. do? I just watch you, and then when you go, okay, time to go. The um, I don't hear the end credit either. Really? Yeah. Yep. That's no boy, it is, no? It is what it is. It is April 24th, and this is the last show of the month yeah. for us. The uh, It's been a crazy few months now with this coronavirus thing and i know we talk about it every time we come on but yeah it's been crazy man how you feeling you good i'm feeling great homie you're uh, back you're back 100 percent now uh yeah uh, except um so today was the first day in 10 days that i decided to work out um because i lost my guest on this and uh, i felt I, I felt weak as a forget about it um, and, uh, <laughs> forget about, forget about it. it. So, um, you know, I did jazz, I did triceps and I was like, all right, I'm going to end with cardio. So I get on the, my, my bike, my stationary bike. And I put it on a setting that's, um, in the mountains. Right. And, uh, so it reacts and the gears get harder and harder as you're going pedaling upwards. Five minutes in, I crawled off that bad boy. I was like, <laughs> 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 I was like it was over. I was really? like, uh, yeah, I need to rest a little bit more. <laughs> let me, let me, I mean, let me, the other day I went running, right? Yeah. I go running, ran about, I don't know, three, four miles, whatever it was. I come home and decide I'm going to do a couple of squats. Done. <laughs> I caught a cramp. I, I was, I was like, yo, what the hell? Dude, I'm like, I got, I really got to work out more. Like, I really, I got to work my, because I used to play basketball when I was younger all the time. I don't do any of that stuff now. Now it's like, you know, you go to work. I, I drive around all day, so I sit in the car. Right. And, like, I don't do anything. So your body really, man, you, like, you, like you're talking about it right Crazy. Now, it's crazy. I was like, whoa, what the hell happened? I, I, he, for the moment it got on, I was like, oh, this is going to be a hard mm-hmm. one. Why did I pick that one? I'm like, and I'm pushing. And I'm like, Ugh. And, my, and I'm like, I'm moving the bike as if I was crawling. Uh, you know, the yeah. pedals were like going like, I'm like, oh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to make it up this hill. I'm going to fall right off. And what are you doing? Oh, my God. Nothing. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm watching you play with the screen. And, uh, <laughs> Makes you nervous? Yeah. Cojolo con okay? There you go. He pulled up the Spanglish. Uh, yeah, so it was, I, I, I was hurting, so I was like, all right. And then normally I would try to go on tonight, but I'll be so burnt out after the two shows we record. I'm not going to yeah. nah, No, no, I hear you. Yeah, man, it's just, and, and now this has become a reality for me, like this, this, I'm doing this all day. Oh, it's nonstop. I have a all bottle day. of, uh, all day. I have uh, day. alcohol spray that I carry with it's me all over the house. All, that's... I, after all of this stuff, the common cold is going to kill me because my immune system is going <laughs> to yeah. be shot. It's going to not know. I, like dirt's going to be like, oh, yeah, we got them now. Yes. Like, it's going to be crazy. That's but, it. That's it. So been, today, let's talk about the potential guest today. Um, okay. So okay. initially, 
on my Twitter account, I was con um, some uh, character named Bunny reached out to me wanting to connect. And I guess the tagline was, oh, um, do you want to know about Bunny? And so I looked, it, it looks like a uh, cosplay character, uh, does a lot of um, conventions, and she does appearances, throws out the ball at the, at the um, ball games, takes a lot of uh, photo ops or whatever. Um, so I was like, oh, that'd be cool. She has a big following, um, look really, you know, and she had a um, project that was coming down the pike. That uh, so we started connecting that she wanted to promote, so we locked her in. Then, um, then she went dark, and I was like, oh, I gotta stop promoting April, and she's not responding, so I'm gonna move forward as if she's not gonna be on April's show. Then on Monday, Monday, Bunny reached out and said, Are we still on? And I was like, Well, it's up to you. Up to you. She, so she, she wants to connect me with some a third party. I said, Well, we've been connecting personally. Um, and now I have to connect, go through a third party. I'm not going to do it. So I just, I ceased responding. And then she responded again, are we on? I said, yes. If you know, Here's the number. This is the time you call. Um, and then last night at around 11.45 p.m., I get a, a, email, a, t a Twitter, I got tweeted, um, that she won't be on the show, but she will have the artist that did the comic book speaking for her on the show. Yeah. So, you know, I was a little um, disturbed by that. Um, and so when I looked up the artist, Jeffrey Henderson, um, he is an actor, producer, director, writer, musician. He does it all. Um, he did a uh, Star Wars short called The Saber Corsair. So he's a fantastic storyboard artist. He did the comic book, uh, The Bunny, um, which was pretty dope. I read the whole thing. It was pretty cool. Uh, so... I'm actually excited to want to talk to this guy. So hopefully he calls in tonight. Um, so you didn't see any promos going out because this has been a weird experience uh, trying to connect with a character that can't talk to us, but is using an affiliate. So we'll see what happens tonight. Um, and if he comes on, great. If he doesn't, we'll just keep it moving. Um, and um, once we've locked him in, then I'll, I'll, I'll put a promo out. Um, promoting his appearance but uh that's what we got looking forward to there and our topic of today yeah catch uh well i'm the get your meds we have a topic can you hear that background noise uh called uh <laughs> fi finding your dynamic duo and it's a play on that but basically i i look at an artist writer combo as a dynamic duo right now obviously when you're creating comics it, it's a it's a whole team it's not just an artist and a writer there's an artist there's a and an artist consists of a penciler anchor nuts i don't know about today i think a lot of that stuff is done um uh digital now there's a lot of digital inking that's done right. now so i don't know that that you know how far they've done with that but you have your colorist your letterer your editor and all that other stuff but for the most part independent artists like ourselves are always looking for our counterpart, right? If we're writers, we're looking for the artist. If we're an artist, we're looking for writers to complete the story that we're trying to tell. And I, when I thought about this, I was like, all right, well, what are some of the ways that an artist, say, for example, somebody's watching a show right now who's a writer and says, Dan, how do I, how do I find that artist? So I figured you and I can, you know, tell them a little bit about how we went about finding artists for the books that we've completed. Now, I have two books, uh, The Adventures of Wonder Duck and Rust 5377. I've been fortunate enough to work with the same group of artists for both books. Right. So that was pretty easy. But you have a bunch of other um A whole lot of cats. And you've worked with a few different artists. So I'll, I'll tell them how I found mine, which kind of goes into how you found yours. Uh, Big Cat Studios were the uh, group of artists. It was it was a whole studio who uh, wrote, I mean, not wrote, but uh, drew the books for me. They've now changed their name since. They're called Nine Lives Animation, I believe it's called now. But, um, but yeah, so a lot of that was back and forth on the internet. I've never met the guys. The guys are actually in the Philippines. So I've never physically met the guys. I've spoken to them a whole bunch of via emails and stuff like that. And now this was 10 years ago when 
it was very different. Communicating was very different. There was no Instagram. There was no, I don't even know, there was, I don't even think there was Twitter back then when we were doing this. And this must have been a little longer than that because you actually put me onto them, Sam. Yes. Right? Yeah, yes. okay. And you found them on a, on a forum. I found them, um, I believe, yeah, it was on a, a forum or DeviantArt. It was one of those two. One of those two. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think on my end, finding an artist for me was easier than normal for me it was you kind of said hey george these guys are pretty cool check them out right i said all right let me check them out they were like yeah we're interested boom we got it going and and and, and we went but i think the most important part to remember and i think most people i don't know if most people don't i don't want to generalize but contracts it's very important that you put things on paper yep when wax. you're hiring an artist, okay, especially somebody and especially somebody in the, you know overseas or whatever, it's very important to have something in writing that says, "Hey, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. This is how things are going to get paid, and this is when this stuff is due." Sign here. I'll sign here. We have a contract. Let's go. Um, it's worked. It worked for me. I've heard horror stories where some people, you know, send a script, send money. And never got pages, so you know it, it's it sucks, but it does happen. Um, how did you find your artist, Sam? Oh, uh, initially it was Big Cat back in the days. Um, I don't know if it was Spider. Uh, was it? It was a. Uh, it was something called Spiderweb. Dot com. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a forum. I think I found them through there. Spiders, the Spiders Web, and okay. uh, we connected and we discussed what I'm willing to pay. They were good with that. And then I wrote up a contract initially, immediately. So once I, we've agreed on the verbal terms, then I, I put it down. And so what I did was, I think with them, I sent them the script and the character designs. And I said, this is what I'm looking for. And I think with them, it was with Scary Area was the first project. And it was the children's book. And I said, here's the story. Here are the characters. Um, send me your drafts. And, I, and uh, so once I've seen the thumbnails, then I gave them a, a percentage. I think it would, the way I did it was, I'll give you, say if the contract was worth $1,000, just for saying. Yeah. Um, and so what I said was, all right, once I approve the look and design of the characters, I'll, I'll give you $100. I'll give you 10% of the total fee. Then, um, then once they sent me the finished, the, the, the rough layout for the entire book in pencil, then I gave them 25% to continue with the inks. And then that's how we did it. Uh, so once I approved every phase, they got, a, you know, and anyway, I wrote that out clearly on the uh, contracts. Um, and with its timelines. So we talked about the timelines. Here's what I'm looking for as can you meet this? They said yes. Okay, boom, boom, boom. So I, the terms were all written down. I only used PayPal. Um, with them, I used PayPal, but uh, with another guy overseas, I had to wire the money because he, really? he, didn't, he didn't know how to use PayPal. Um, and I think he was in um, India. Do they, do they uh, charge you a fee for that? The wiring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I accepted. I accepted the fee. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's how basically how I did it. I, I I posted, hey, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z. This is what I'm looking for. Blah 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 blah. And then people would reach out to me, and I look at styles, and I'm like, ah, oh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. No, that's not. What I'm looking for. Then I would see their portfolio, and I'm like, all right, yours look like it's gonna be a match. You know, but I'm here are the terms. Do you agree with the terms? You could, whatever, and get the specifics going. But it was important to find the right person for the look, and they really complimented the scary airy. Um, and then I hooked them up with you. Right. So you said something that that's that I think it's very important when looking for an artist, right? Because and we I can only speak from a writer's perspective. A lot of times, you know, you'll write a you'll write a story, and in your mind, I think as a writer. In your mind, you know what that story, you know what you want that story to look like. Right. Right. But for me, anyway, I must speak for myself. I'm limited in my ability to draw that style. 
So I'm looking for somebody who has that style. The style to me is very important yes. because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why I say that. We are working on a book called Street Journal. And you've, you've heard of the Street Journal. Right. And finding an artist for that book is very difficult. Not because there aren't a lot of talented artists. There are a lot of talented artists out there, but artists cost a lot of money. Yep. Artists, I mean, I think the going rate for like a pencil page, I've seen anywhere between $100 per page yeah. for pencils. You know, and now you got to, you're talking about now you got to get an inker mm -hmm. who's probably going to charge you close to that. Then you're looking for a colorist who's going to charge you, you know what I mean? So yeah. it starts adding up. So when we're looking for somebody who can draw a book, when I say style, I'm talking about this book is about, you know, a kid growing up in the inner city in 1995. Now, that sounds easy enough. Cool. All right. Just give him, you know, give him some, some reference and have him draw it. I think what we found when we've done that is that it sounds easy. 1995, give him uh, some reference shots of the 90s, you know, Naughty by Nature, Nas, nah. you know you know, Dr. Dre, and let him draw it. And it doesn't work because you have to understand the era as well as a period piece. Yes. So you don't, you can't just copy what you see. You have to know what it was like to live in that era. Yep. So that, I think that that's, that's part of the, the problem with this particular, with this particular book. As far as styles go, Sam, what do you look for in your, in your artists? Like, what is it that you're looking for when you're, creating or writing a story. For example, Forbidden, for example. Uh, I'll, make, I'll narrow it down. So, Forbidden, forbidden, so, well, forbidden is the full graphic novel that's going to be coming out this fall. Um, uh, the initial artist back in the days was Andy Balaroyo. And I think he complimented the style really good. He captured the look yeah. and feel of Forbidden. Um, um, that chump didn't want to continue on with Forbidden. But uh, anyway, so I had to go find another artist to finish up the project. But... Um, I was looking for, at this stage, I was looking for someone that was going to get the emotions of the book. Um, not necessarily mimic Anibal's style, uh, um, but somebody who was able to, number one, meet my budget. So I was very limited. Budget. I was very limited, so I had, I had to be, I couldn't be selective, as selective as I was back then, uh, because this time I didn't have that... Um, Purse strings. So I was very specific. This is what I'm willing to pay. And I had about 30 guys jump in. And then some of them, when they started talking to me, they're like, yo, can you add an extra, can you raise it up an extra 50%? And I'm like, this was now? This is when I was negotiating for Forbidden. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so I had to, you know, weigh down, weigh down, weigh down. And so I found somebody who's able to capture just, um, emotion and um, dynamic scene ability. Someone who's able to paint. And, and the guy that I got, uh, he did it really well with black and white. Now, his style is very bulky. Um, and so his women are very voluptuous and bulky. Uh, so that was a sacrifice I made um, because he, he captured the look. He was able to do big scenes really well. Um, mm -hmm. captured a lot of different elements really well, um, angles really well, perspective really well. So I made the exception. I was like, all right, I'll let that slide. And he's within my br my budget. So I think it was for, with Forbidden. If I could, I would have gotten somebody similar to the guy who did my cover. Yeah. Because I, I did pay a lot more money f to for the cover artist. And this guy did a fantastic job. Um, and uh, let me see, Samuel. No, it's not there. So it would have been. Um, but uh, uh, there, uh, no, the image is not there. But uh, I just couldn't. I couldn't pay the same rates as the guy that I hired for the cover. Uh, but I was looking for someone who's just able to tell visually um, without having to read it. You can, you can actually tell the story from, his, from the movement of the characters but from panel to panel. And he did that really well. See, when, um, when you talk about samples and you talk about um angles and things like this right there's only this there, i think for artists when you're posting things up on deviant art okay. okay 
and if you're an artist, you should be posting up not just big splash scenes, you know, just Spider-Man, you know, swinging through the town or Superman flying towards the screen. Right. That's cool. And those shots are probably awesome. Wolverine cutting to somebody or something like that. Those are awesome shots. But if you want to get hired, you need to show sequential art. Yes. Because sequential art is what we're looking for as writers. We right. want to know, okay, you can draw that character and it looks great. That looks awesome. But can you tell a story in panels? So you want to have your your sequential art up on the screen so that when we're clicking through it, oh, okay, right. oh, wow, okay, he can do that. Right. The other thing I think that gets overlooked are backgrounds. Yep. Backgrounds. Simple things. A kitchen, somebody on the phone, talking on the phone. Simple scenes that you may not even think, that's not important. I just want to draw that fighting scene where they're kicking each other's butt. That's cool, and we're going to be looking for that because that sells. But we want to know that you can tell that story. You know, what if it's right before, right before he has to jump into action, he gets a phone call. Can you draw that person with the hand? Can, does that hand look right, right when he's holding the phone? You know, yeah. is the perspective behind him correct? Right. Those are the things that, as writers, we're looking for. Okay. Yeah. Now, I was going to ask you this also, Sam. When you said that he sends you samples, do you normally pay for those samples, or are those kind of part of the deal? Let me see what you can do with my character. Show me what you got, and then it's it's you part know, of we'll the package deal. So okay. it's um, um, the way I had it set up, and you know, what, and that'll be a good time for another show. I can actually show you a sample of the contract. Um, mm -hmm. But the way I had it set up was <clears throat> you will send me um, rough designs of the characters. Once I approve them, I'll, I'll drop it 10% of whatever the total payment is um, to continue. Boom. Once I approve that, then um, every 10 pages, this is how we did it. So the first 10 pages, I'd have to approve the design, the layout. So he did it in rough pencils. Right? right, because this is a digital artist too, so he did everything on the computer. So mm -hmm. he illustrated in pencil, but on the computer, he inked it over the pencils on the computer. So he just went over yeah. it, he scanned it in, whatever, and it just boom. So I got, I didn't have to worry about getting an inker. Um, uh, so once I approved the the layouts to the first ten pages, then he got fifty percent of um, the page rate. So say if the page rate, hypothetically, was 50 bucks, he'd get $25 for each page of uh, the pencils. And then when I got the finished inks, then he'd get the other 50%. That's the way I did it. Um, uh, so this way it worked out. So this way there was an incentive for him to keep working, um, and he was getting money. Um, and there was an incentive for me to make sure, because I wouldn't pay unless I approved it. And if there were some things that said, you know, I need this change, and need this change, and I would... You know, go over some of the, the pages and send it back to him and then he'd go immediately within 48 hours send it back to me so what about this good boom immediately on paypal and i was like and i noted on paypal it's like you know approve for issue three pages one through ten um layout designs and then when that was done the inks came in and i approved that then i was like approved pages one through ten of issue three final pages Boom. Yeah. And that's how I did it every time. So I had um, a journal, a daily you know, journal of everything that's happening with PayPal. And, and every time at the end of every project, I printed out that um, stream of payments and I put it in a folder with his file, with the contract. Um, so I always had it. Yeah. And how, how far along are you guys on that? He's done. Oh, he's right done. now, he's we're good. just waiting for you to letter. <laughs> You're yeah. lettering oh, it. Thought, well, send me the rest of the book. Yeah, it's the, the last 10 pages. Page. I got to send it to you tonight. Yeah, send um, it to me. yeah he's done. All right, cool. Yeah, no, because th that's the thing. Like when, when you were talking about samples and you said that you liked the way he did angles, is that something that you saw on his, yeah. when you were looking for him, like his storytelling, or was that something that he did for you? Like that you kind of discovered as he was doing your pages. No, so um, when he and I connected, because he was one of the ones that were putting in the bids for the project, um, I looked up his page on um, DeviantArt, and I yeah. was very impressed by his stuff. 
And uh, so then when we connected, uh, I sent him what Anibal's done on the first two issues. I said, here's the finished pages for the first two issues. So he got to, he got to see that and the second, the, the way they moved from scene to scene. And, um, and I also said, him, so how's that? It's my, uh, go ahead. Don't worry about it. We're good. It's my, 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 my office is going off right now. I thought it was your stomach. And, uh, so, uh, <laughs> um, and he got all the character designs and then, as I was writing a story, new characters were coming into play, so I would send him those designs. I would illustrate them myself and send them to him, uh, gotcha. and then he would have to show me his rendition of it. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the good thing, and, and I know you do this too, and I do this as well. You know, when I first started doing this, I wanted to be the artist on the book, so a lot of my characters I had already designed, like. And that's normally how I, I start anyway. I start right. with the design of a character, and then I put them in a story. You know, you just right. do it that way. Um, but a lot of my characters were already designed. So I wasn't... Because some artists will ask you f a fee for designing a character. Yes. And that's something that could totally happen. I guess that, you know, that's... that's again, I wasn't leaving it up to him. I was doing them. I, I did the layouts and the designs of the character looks. Right. And, uh, exactly. and then all he had to do was just try to emulate that look. Or in his style of art, right? That was yeah. it. To just recreate the look. Um, so I controlled the dance the whole way through uh, because I didn't want to come down down the road saying, "Well, you didn't have on the contract that I had to design your characters, so I want an extra fee for that." You know, so I did it. Um, I made sure that I I took care of it. Well, yeah, that and that's that. You know, the what it also eliminates is the whole Steve Ditka, Stan Lee thing. Who created Spider Man? Yes, right? I created the entire character. I drew right. it. I wrote it. And you're basically just drawing what I'm... Yeah, even you know, the I basic soldiers, I, I just gave them a, a look of the uniform. And I said they yeah. will all be wearing the same damn thing. Um, so I don't care if they have blonde hair, blue hair, green hair. Um, the, the uniforms are the same unless they are a different rank. That's it. Right. Uh, and then we'll show them a little uh, all, uh, variation of the different rank. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, the, I love the process. The creative process, like when you're working with an artist, like I love that... that you know, what you get when you open up your email address yeah. and you know that there are pages in there and you start looking through these pages and you're like, oh my God, because your writing is, you know, coming to life yeah. through through the artwork that this person just did. Yeah. So I, I love that part of it. What do you do when you get a page that doesn't look the way you thought it was going to look, even after you guys went over the thumbnails and it just wasn't executed right? What like have you encountered that? With yeah, yeah. I oh, I got no. Um, I would kept get it into his uh, layouts. So mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to get the pencil layouts, and so um, in fact, we he and I went. I wouldn't pay him on the last page of the final issue because I didn't like the angle or the look of. I lost you. Uh, the look of. Nah, I mean. Yeah, of that scene, and so I I needed the angle to be a little different, and I needed. To see more of the demons that were flying in the air, um, yeah. So um, he was able to do it. You know, um, the good thing about this guy is that he was very receptive to criticism. Uh, right. There was no ego, so that was good. Um, yeah. And he knew that I was an artist myself, so I'm basically saying, "Hey, this is the direct the angle," I, and I would spell it out in the panels. Yeah. Page this page panel one, you know, you know, bird's eye view of or worm's eye view or you know, head on shot with camera over the shoulder, whatever. So I would actually position the cameras in how I spelled out that frame, and hopefully, hope making it as easy as possible for him to be able to just illustrate that scene. Yeah, I you know when I was working with um when I was working with the guys in the Philippines, I. I I like to write my. I like. I like to let the, the artist kind of like do his thing. You mm -hmm. know, I do write my scripts. Will tell you what I want on the page, right. but sometimes if I don't, if I don't have anything clearly in my head that I want it, that I want drawn specifically, I'll just say, you know, have fun with it. You know, this is what the scene is. Go for it. I did that mostly on the Wonder Dog book. When they were doing uh, Russ, for some reason, I decided let me do like an open page, almost like. I'm going to tell you what's on this page right. in just like a paragraph. And you guys break it down however you want. Right. And for some reason, I ended up getting...
Right. Kind of do what they wanted to do. The stuff came out well, but that's not what I was looking for. So I knew then that when I was doing my Wonder Duck book, I would have to say panel one, panel two, yeah. panel three, yeah. panel four. Yeah. Now, that might have very well been because inter they're international and I just and you can't sit down, say, in a meeting side by side, okay, this is what I'm looking for and this is what I'm doing. Right. So you have to rely on the script and on maybe just a couple of messages you're sending via email or whatever it is to get what you want on the page. Right. You know, and that's right. something that you, I think you have to take into consideration. But for the most part, for me, the biggest thing is when choosing an artist is money. Yep. It's the budget. Yes. Money talks. You know, yeah. it's the budget. It's because what, what, how much can you spend on that page and not go broke? Yeah. And what's still fair for the artist or enough for the artist, you know, to get paid for it. Yeah. You know, for the work that they're doing. Yeah. And, you know, it's tough. Sometimes it's hard, man. And you, I know you, you, you've done it and you know what it's like to be out there negotiating and, yeah. you know. And I'm a nickel and dimer. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, You're so, but we're going to, what, what you, what, we're going to go to, we're going to go to commercial because I'm oh. expecting the call. Uh, okay. So hopefully the call will come in after the commercial break. So let's uh, cross our fingers that it does. Yeah, that, that's him. He's being at this. So um, the phone has not gone off yet. So we'll continue this conversation um, as, until it does. But uh, okay. yeah, crazy. It's a crazy, crazy world, Georgie. Crazy, crazy world. <laughs> you know? All right. Well, okay. So cool. So finding the dynamic duos, right? So that's what we were talking about. And um, I can't exactly remember what it, where we left off, but. You said about, um, I was talking about how I nickel and dime and I'm a, I, I negotiate the hell out of a project. Uh, oh, because, yeah, look, dime. once I've on my own determined what my budget is, and I can tell you, I take a lot of, I take a lot of heat too. Because normally I go on forums and I'm like, all right, look, I got a project. This is for the budget. And then I got these knuckleheads who are not working for any professionals, who don't have anything out in the market, but they think they, they just, oh, the phone's for me. Oh, This is Cash to Craze. Is this uh, Mr. Henderson? It is. How you doing? Who's this? Good. I am Sam the Crazy Man Vera for Cash to Craze Podcast. And I, uh, my co-host on the line is George Medina. George? Hey, what's going on? Jeffrey, how are you? I'm good, man. How you guys doing? Good, you good. Staying safe in all this in the midst of the apocalypse? <sighs> yeah, oh, no, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> it's insane, it is. man. It is. Oh, um, are, are, you, are you in Cali? I'm in uh, Los Angeles, yeah. Okay. And uh, how's, it, how, how's it over there? It's it's a weird thing, man, because it's so beautiful, and um, you go outside and it's easy. I mean, fortunately, me and my girl live right across the street from a really big, beautiful park, which helps. Um, but it's a really stark contrast where you come in and watch the news and watch all this this madness going on, and it's it's. Uh, I don't know, man. At the end of the day, I'm much more afraid of large groups of scared dumbasses than I am of anything else. <laughs> yes. So yes. I indeed, just think, I mean, and you know, and truthfully, man, like I think a lot of this stuff going on, like, you know, it's gotten so bad in New York. It's gotten so bad all over the country. And it's a shame that, um, you know, they have to keep putting these protocols and these rigid things yeah. in place. 
But I think ultimately it's because you can't rely on people to just not act no. like dumbasses. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. I, and the then they, they get all pissed. Activity. No, go, go ahead. Yeah, and then and people get all pissed off because, well, I don't want to be told what to do, and you're infringing on my yeah. freedom. It's like, well, yeah, well, if you didn't act like a fucking moron, maybe you wouldn't have to. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's me. Maybe I'm crazy. You know? <laughs> no, today actually here in New York they shut down uh, playgrounds because people uh, were congregating in the playground. So the, the governor said, all right, you guys are not listening, so we're going to have to just shut these things down, and you just don't get playgrounds down. Now you don't have playgrounds. So there you go. Yeah, so, I mean, under ideal circumstances, that's scary, yeah. but with what's going on with, with those, those guys, guys and those poor people who are braving all the stuff to look out for others, man, it's just it's it's just crazy that you know. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, man. It's amazing. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, Jeff, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, Please, that's like thanking me for giving me a present. <laughs> <laughs> so t tell us a little bit about yourself, Jeff. For the people that don't know who Jeffrey uh, Henderson is, on PlanetHenderson.com, which I love the name of your website. But tell us a little bit about oh, yourself. Thanks. <laughs> oh man. Um, well, uh, let me see. Uh, I do a lot of stuff creatively. I mean, like, um, functionally I'm pretty much unemployable in the real world anymore because I've kind of been doing freelance creative stuff for such a long time. Right. Um, I started out doing com drawing comic books, which led. And then at the same time, um, I studied acting for a really long time. I did voiceover stuff in theater for a long time and, um, and played music. And a lot of this goes back to, I, don't, uh, I really, I kind of have my own like Marvel Comics origin story where I had a really terrible accident when I was a kid that wow. left me bedridden for a long time. So I couldn't physically go out and do little kid stuff. So my grandmother and my mom who raised me kind of brought the outside world to me. So it was all guitars and record players and comic books and drawing pads. And I think that's where a lot of this stuff came from by extension. So, wow. um, so I, from comic books, I went to doing like film storyboard stuff. That's actually what brought me to Los Angeles. And I've been really fortunate that I worked on a lot of movies. I've worked with a lot of big people and a lot of stuff that I like a lot. And then that has led to me doing um, like writing and directing my own stuff. And I've been doing a lot of acting and voiceover stuff. Um, a couple of years ago, I did a short Star Wars film that blew up and was one of the grand prize winners in Lucasfilm's uh short film contest and um that kind of took on a life of its own which was crazy and i don't have any delusions of grandeur about it like it's cool you know for having nine dollars in a weekend is a deficit. it's all right <laughs> but um but just the fact that it resonated with people the way that it did was kind of cool and then that's yeah. led to some other stuff and and i think the one big advantage of of um being so being so steeped in all this geeky stuff since i was a kid is that um, now that I'm kind of, I'm writing more than anything and I'm, I'm kind of developing my own stuff, but it comes back to this simple thing that I used to say a lot when I was storyboarding is that, you know, movie productions are huge, crazy machines with all these moving parts and all these people and all this ego and all this, all that stuff. Like all the cliches are all cliches for good reason. But, right. but the one thing is that, you know, my field of expertise really is less about drawing than it is storytelling. I mean, in a whole movie production, I'm the only guy with the fucking word story in my job title. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so drawing's more a means to that end. Um, so yeah, so now I'm just trying to write out the apocalypse <laughs> and um, I'm just kind <laughs> of doing lot. my own thing and, oh yeah, yeah, it's craziness. Um, That's amazing. So we'll see what so happens, let me, let me, man. But I mean, you... go ahead. Jeff, go ahead. No, oh, I was, I was gonna just going to say, I'm, all right, I'll shut up. <laughs> what do you mean? Who's on first? <laughs> no, no, what I was going to ask you was, you said something very interesting. You said when you were a kid, you had this accident that left you bedridden and you started, you know, it, it can, you kind of started, you fell in love with comics and music and things of that nature. Oh, yeah. Now, you you have you ever worked outside of the creative industry like have you you know how most of us start off you know maybe you work at a fast food place or like how did you start off how did you get into the the comic book industry let's start there well okay um <laughs> well when i was a kid my dad and my mom got divorced when i was very young and mm -hmm. so my my mom took me and my brother and we moved to baltimore with my grandmother and then my dad was a really successful and accomplished uh, commercial director. So mm. when I'd go and visit him, 
once I got better enough to be able to travel and stuff, I'd take the Metroliner to New York on the weekends. But he was more interested in banging Venezuelan models two at a time than raising a kid. So, um, and back then it was very different because it wasn't like, like everything's freelance now. But back then, like he had this bullpen of, of storyboard guys and guys that would do that stuff for him that were in-house. And they were these old cats, you know, the drinking Glenn Levitt with the suspenders on and the cigar. And they'd be like, and he'd pawn me off on them for the whole weekend while he was out doing his thing. So they'd be like, yeah. all right, kid, it's just like drawing Spider-Man, except it's a guy with a Pepsi. Go. And um, so by the time I graduated high school, I'd done like a quarter million dollars worth of free storyboard shit for my cat agency. And, um, but, and then storyboards and comics, you know, there's a lot of shared literacy there i mean because ultimately drawing comics doing storyboards it comes back to the same thing where you're essentially a director it's just your medium is paper rather than film but theoretically a lot of the same discipline applies it's composition and lighting and flow and framing and even acting because you're trying to capture specific gestures and specific facial yes. expressions to convey specific things so yes. to me, all this, all this shit essentially goes back to storytelling. So um, I think part of it was because of, you know, my dad being kind of a bastard. And part of it was because I had grown up so, like, comics were, and especially when you're a little kid, you know, you don't have the sophistication to make the distinction that it's just a comic book. To me, that shit was real. Like, I learned to read from comics. I learned morality and right and wrong from comics. So... By the time I got old enough to start working, I was so entrenched in it and so in love with all that stuff that um, after that experience doing all those boards with my dad, I was like, well, I can, it would be cool to keep doing this and just do it for comics. So, um, you know, I, I would do spot work here and there. I did a lot of indie stuff. Eventually, I did some stuff for DC and for Image and um, did a lot of my own stuff. So... And then doing comics is, you know, there's kind of a direct progression where like one kind of begets the next, begets the next. And um, so, you know, I mean, I'm, I, it's, I'm very, very, very grateful and I feel very blessed that my, my inner Peter Pan 12 year old has turned into like viable employment opportunities yeah. instead of me being in a padded cell somewhere, you know. <laughs> Instead of a fucking room at Bellevue with a straight jacket on, going, oh, I love Spider Man. I love Spider Man. Spider Man's great. Got you know. Yeah. So. Hear you. That's so yeah. Incredible, man. So that so that that obviously led to like you said the story uh, storyboarding in in Hollywood, and I, I was reading some of the some of the credits here, like you, you know Christopher Robin and you know Twilight Eclipse, Thirty Days of Night, and all these things. That must have been surreal, like working on these sets and like, okay, I'm doing, you know, the storyboards for these, uh, for these big companies. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, the crazy part about that is, again, this goes back to when I was a kid, but like, to this day, man, like living in Los, because I'm an East Coast guy, dude. I mean, I grew up back and forth between Baltimore, New York, and Detroit. How's that for the, <laughs> the triple crown of blue collar, hard ass East Coast Seriously. Irish upbringing? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. um, and so when I was a kid and I'd watch TV and I'd watch movies, especially because I was essentially a captive audience, um, I never looked at Los Angeles like a re I didn't know it was a real place. You get that kid logic going. I thought it was like, like fucking Valhalla or like some fantasy world or like, I just knew that it was always sunny, that there were beautiful people and they made movies there. So when I finally got to be here, when I finally visited the first time, um, that's never worn off. Like there's still like, I'm not saying that it, there's not stuff that goes along with it, because there certainly is. And again, a lot of the cliches are cliches for good reason, but um, I'm, there's something so surreal about it where, like, when I see, I recognize, a, like, something from a, from a movie or from a TV show, or I see some celebrity, and the novelty of it still hasn't worn off, where I get all, like, I feel like I'm five years old again. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And, um, and then... You know, go, like, I'll tell you a story that kind of encapsulates the whole thing. I worked with Sam Raimi really closely for a long time on a bunch of consecutive projects. And I was such a huge fan of his stuff, like, Arm, you know, Army Darkness and Evil Dead and all the stuff that he did. And I knew, and he's an East Coast guy. He's from Detroit. He did all that stuff on his own, which I have a lot of respect for. 
So when I finally got the call to go in and work on Spider-Man, I was a little freaked out because it, it's like one of those meet your heroes thing. More than anything, I was afraid that I was going to meet him and he'd be an asshole and ruin it all. <laughs> it would prohibit me from loving his work anymore because that's happened a couple times too. But I go in there and he's the, he's the coolest dude ever. He's just such a sweetheart. He was so, even if, even if he wasn't who he is, even if he was like an old dude that had a shoe store, he'd be one of the sweetest people I'd ever met. But the fact that he's been able to, to remain that cool and unaffected in spite of his success is, is really something. So we go in and he's, um, you know, we're, we're, he's talking about Spider-Man and I'd read the script and he's got, he pulls up this big ass box of action figures on his desk and he's choreographing fight scenes with action figures with like Spider-Man and the Vulture and all this stuff. And I spontaneously just started laughing. And he looked at me like I was crazy because we didn't know each other. I mean, this is the first time I'd really met him. And right. he's like, what's so funny? And I just, I collected myself and I was like, man, what fucking alternate reality did I wake up in this morning where I'm sitting here choreographing a Spider-Man movie with Sam Lane? What the fuck is going on? And um, that pretty much encapsulates the whole thing, man. Like I just, right. you know, like with some of the credits you rolled off or some of the other stuff I worked on, like, I, I can't think about it too much because if I do, I start, I, it just seems so preposterous, like in a good way. Not, I'm not, it's not a criticism. Like it's a good thing. Like I just feel like that, that my love of this stuff has been able to translate into like a career is crazy. Yeah, um, that's amazing. That's it, the dream. You know, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm really grateful, man. And like, and now by extension to have some of this other stuff going on, um, I'm just, I'm really grateful for it, man. And none of it's lost on me. And even the bad stuff at the time can be really frustrating because like, I won't say who it was, but I had a couple, a thing a couple years ago where I worked for a director that was like the Muhammad Ali of Hollywood douchebags. Like he was like the Voltron of douchebags where he was like a, a Uber douchebag comprised of the parts of lesser douchebags to where he's like the Frankenstein's monster of fucking LA asshole. Wow. And, um, Right. He was so bad that um, I had to go in the bathroom and I was hiding out in the bathroom stall and I had to call my girlfriend to talk me off the ledge because I was that close to throwing this guy out his third story window. Wow. Um, but Man. but even that kind of stuff, you look back on later and it's funny. I'm I because I, I like I'm an experienced junkie, man. I love the I like having the anecdotes and the experience because you can't take yeah. any of this shit with you. What really lasts is, you know, that kind of stuff, man. I, I just. I love soaking it in. So I try to be open and I try to, um, if I'm fortunate enough to be up for a project, I try to do the best I can and offer something worthwhile. And, you know, cause it's not a dress rehearsal, man. And I'm, I think, I think part of it goes again, goes back to me being a kid. And like I sit and spent so much time staring out windows and wishing I could be up and about. So then when I finally was, I really try not to take any of it for granted. I don't want any of it to be lost on me. I don't want to be cynical. I don't want to be jaded. I don't want to be one of these assholes that rolls their eyes and doesn't give a shit where I'm too cool. Fuck all that, man. Like I, I, I want to revel in it and celebrate the fact that I'm lucky enough where I get to indulge this shit for a living, you know? Yeah. No, sure, man. Amen to that. And, and, and it sounds like you, you've had, like you said, you've had your fair share of guys who you, loved working with and guys that you were like mm, okay let me just get this project done and over there. right like, <laughs> well like yeah i mean to be real like my i've been really fortunate that mo the vast majority of my experiences have been really good like yeah. comparatively there haven't been that many terrible people but the people who were terrible were really awful but yeah. again you know cliches are cliches for a reason and and the other thing too is I try to be, um, I try to have, uh, I, tr I try to get my head around it in the sense that, you know, when you're working with someone like that, it's finite. Like, you know, you do the best you can. Sometimes you, you run into difficult personalities, whatever. But I always look at it like people with like that are ultimately their own payback anyway. There's nothing I can do that's going to make it worse for them than then just having to wake up in the fucking morning and be them, you know? So I try to be cool about it and I try to just enjoy the time and like, you know, and if someone's that way, then you got to let it go, man, because you're not going to change the system. You're not going to change them. It's the same thing like what's going on politically with everyone's so divided and everyone's got their own thing. And it's like, you know, I get to the point where I try to 
stay out of it. Not that I don't have opinions and not that I'm not passionate about it, but some people make it very clear that they're not open to having their mind changed, that they're not open to hearing another point of view, that critical thinking isn't something that's important to them. So I'm not going to bang my head against the wall trying to, trying to teach a dog to play chess. Like I just let it go. And I'm like, all right, cool, man, do your thing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. You're absolutely right, man. And, and what I, what I love about about like just the conversation we're having, you're very passionate. You are a passionate person, so you obviously have your your views and your and, and your and your opinions. But you sound like you just know when the time comes to like speak on that, or maybe just hold back. That's not important enough. Let's just talk about something else. Like even the conversation we're having now is like we're vibing on like let's talk about the creative side of what you do for a living and i love that you know well i appreciate that man and i mean you guys are new york guys i mean i think there's a certain amount of it maybe it's that east coast thing that because it's weird like i'm out here i've literally had people stop me at conventions or, or when i meet them and they're like oh you're an east coast guy right i'm like how do you how, how do you even know that it's a vibe and i think i think part of that is because out like in the out here, and, I, and I'll preface this, dude, I love living in Los Angeles. This isn't a criticism. I love living. E even with all the weirdness, I love it. But I think the difference is back east, like, you, it's harder to get away from people. Like, you, by definition, by design, you're stuck with, you're stuck around people all the time. Subway, on the street, in an office, in the, in the tiny-ass apartment, like, go, driving on the, on the, 95 going to Baltimore going to Boston going to Pittsburgh going to Philly for a concert whatever the deal it's much harder to sequester yourself if you want to and I yeah. think people from the east coast develop an innate sense of no like choosing your battles like you you because you have to it's a survival thing like you can't approach everything either a one or a ten there ha you have to graduate in the middle because you'll go fucking berserk you can't like you can't you can't attack everything like it's the end of the world because it's fucking not. Right. It's just some right. shit you have to let go. You have to develop a sense of, is this worth my time? And it, if it isn't, then, you know, at least that for me, because I come back to this thing a lot where I feel like time is really the only currency that matters. You can always get more money. Anything else can be replaced. You can buy a new arm. You can have another kid. You can have another wife. You can buy another house. You can get another job. But you can never, ever, ever, ever get your fucking time back. So I'm very, very conscious of stuff that robs me of my time because it's too valuable to give away on bullshit. Right, yeah. right. So and I have a question. Hold on. I have a question for you. Um, can you tell me how, what was your, how did you get connected on the project with um, Bunny? Because <clears throat> I, 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 read, I read the book. I mean, it was, I, I loved it. And you, the, artwork, oh, the artwork is amazing. And... Yeah, I mean, you really didn't even need the dialogue because you were able to tell the story beautifully um, just well, frame thanks, by frame. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, and no one's seen it. I think you guys are the only people that have seen it so far because <laughs> we had to suspend so much of this stuff because of the, the viral apocalypse. But right. um, I'm, I'm going to tread lightly because I'm under such exhaustive NDAs here. That, like, okay. I don't want to inadvertently step in a bear trap. Right. Um. What I can tell you is that the, when I was approached about it, um, at first I was a little reluctant just because um, it was so ambitious. I was like, I don't know, guys. Like, this is some, like, it's, it's one of those, like, it sounds great, but to pull it off, you, all this stuff has to work. And I was like, I don't know, man. Like, that's, that's, a, that's a lot. And, um, but Patrick, whose name is on the book, who, who is responsible for a lot of this stuff, um, he and I've gotten to know each other and, and, and are very like-minded creatively. And there's all these other people involved. There's all this other stuff. And, um, it went from, to make a long story short, it, 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 the, the stuff that they've done to realize it made me a believer to the point where I felt like I could really make a substantial contribution. Nice. And, um, they, it's unfortunate, not just for the project, obviously, but for everyone, the world at large, but in terms of our specific plans and what was specifically going on with Bunny, um, there, there's really a, a transmedia thing. Like it, it, what, what they're trying to do is something that is pretty ambitious and pretty wide reaching. And I, and hasn't been tried. I'm not going to say no one's ever tried to do it because a lot of people have, 
but not that many people have been able to successfully do what they're trying to do. And I give them a lot of credit because they're, they're, it's not just talk. They really are, like, you guys know, man, like there's a, when you hear about stuff like this, there's a requisite amount of things that you immediately think, well, because there's not a lot of wiggle room, either it's going to be really legit or right. it's going to be stupid and corn. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. yeah. and, um, yeah. and I don't, and I think, I take what I, I don't take myself that seriously, but I take what I do pretty seriously and I've worked my ass off for my reputation and I don't want to like risk it on some clown show bullshit. I mean, that's the bottom line is like, you know, I don't want to risk having that target on my back. So there was kind of this, um, you know, a period where we were going back and forth and they were kind of laying out their plans and, and, you know, and then it got to the point where they're like, well, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And I was like, listen, is this like Hollywood? What do you think where you really want me to just agree with you? Or do you really want to know what I think? And he's like, no, we really want to know what you think. And I was like, well, this, 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 and this. And they're like, all right, let's do it. I was like, just like that. And they're like, just nice. like that. And nice. they've stepped up, man. And like, we've been, we're in months and months into this. And we have some really, really exciting, legit stuff going on. And a lot of the people involved are very, very, um, I don't know, man, really committed to making it objectively really good. It's not a cash in. It's not a gimmick. Like, um, yeah. and I don't, you know, you can't predetermine. I don't know how successful it's going to be. You, you know, it's always hindsight. I mean, I can't, I don't know how it's going to play out, but I can tell you from my involvement very personally and the, the material I've seen and the plans that I know are in place and the, the amass, they've amassed a huge wealth of resources and, and stuff that, that when they're ready to launch, they, they've got some bombs to drop. From that point of view, I can tell you, I think it's going to be really cool and I'm really excited and I'm really glad to be part of it. And I think a lot of the people involved are really cool and really give a shit about making it legit and making it really cool. And so far, I think they've succeeded there or are succeeding um, because I'm on the inside looking out. But yeah, man, I um, I'm really excited about it. I'm really grateful to be involved. And um, and I think when we have a chance to open the doors and really get it out there. I hope that it resonates with people the way that it's resonated with me. Yeah, no, I mean, how, it looks. How's it, that for a, a savvy <laughs> diplomat? Yeah, well, it's been a whole mission. Yeah, ready. yeah. Uh, you know, we connected on uh, Twitter. Uh, uh, Bunny actually reached out to me on Twitter, and that's how this whole conversation started. Um, and it's been mysterious the whole way through because um, there was a point where I'm like, I'm, you know, you're going to be on the show, you're not going to be on the show, and then. Um, then she told me about you, and I was like, "All right, let's yeah. see if the phone rings." Um, and there is a, there is like legit a bunny too. Like it's not. Um, one day we'll be able to. Un- the thing I keep coming back to is you guys are New Yorkers. When I was a little kid, man, especially I told you I was laid up for a while. Kiss loomed very large in my consciousness when I was a kid. Is, yeah. Um, yeah. And again, I didn't know they were they were four dudes from Brooklyn. I just thought they were like super powered rock stars, man. I was like, Come on. you know, um, and they, but they committed to that shit. I mean, it was years right. before anybody saw them with no makeup. They went to right. great, great lengths to, to maintain that. There is a lot of that same work ethic in play here. Right. Okay. That's um, awesome, but he's got some world-class people, man, that the suits, the helmets, um, some of the we've uh i know they've shot a bunch of stuff there's a bunch of test footage there's effects footage um there's all kinds of visual and video components um it's pretty it's pretty ambitious man and and there's a lot of a lot more ground covered than you would think from just a stupid ass comic book nice that that comic book was fire though i really liked it man congratulations on that well thanks for saying that man i really appreciate it because like i said i'm in a weird vacuum i mean as far as i know you guys are the only guys that have seen it other than us (laughs) oh yeah and um, and we didn't realize that uh, i got it last i got it at midnight um so uh um i read it at three in the morning and um um i I reached out to george just like you know i'm looking forward to this conversation because this guy's artwork is fantastic Oh, amazing, well, thanks dude. for that. I, uh, sincerely, I really appreciate that, man. Thank you. You got it. And uh, and it's it's just funny how you worked on the uh, the Star Wars project in this past week, being um, you know on house arrest for this pandemic that's going on. I've uh, watched yeah. the Mandalorian. I've been watching every episode of Clone Wars. Um, oh, nice. 
<laughs> nah, dude. Hey, man. You it, know what? We, 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 we want to have you back on the show and where we can have a little more time to talk to you about some of the stuff that you're doing. Yes. And I'm down for whatever. It's been a total pleasure. Sweet. You guys are wonderful. And I hope I didn't, uh, you know, I hope I didn't make a complete ass of myself. But I, I really appreciate the time. And no. if you guys need anything, man, don't hesitate. Just give me a shout. Definitely. I did I did send you a, uh, con I did connect with you on, um, on both on Twitter and on Instagram. It's, you'll see Catch the Craze or Crazy Comics on Twitter. That's us. Oh, cool, man. Um, but, yes, it was great having you in the show. We want to have you back again. Um you know, we're going to direct everybody to your website because there's so many layers to you that we can go on forever. But uh, we have an, another show we have to record very soon. No, absolutely. Um, but um, uh, thank you but again. Thanks, bro. I really appreciate it. You guys take good care. You stay safe out there. Don't let people give you a hard time. Wash your fucking hands. <laughs> and you give me a shout whenever you want me on, and I'm there. You got it, buddy. You thanks a lot. It. Thanks, Jeff. Take All care, right, man. gentlemen. Bye. I'll see you soon. Bye. Later. Fantastic. We're going to cut. Um, thank you for listening to Cast the Craze. We'll talk more about Jeff. And um, we're going to end credit here. No, I was talking about my friend Aquis. I met him. Oh. Yeah. Say my name, say my name. Right? <laughs> this is what you were thinking? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, he was crappy. He said, I'm the. You're listening to Catch the Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze. You are listening to Catch the Craze. I'm Catch the Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze. Candy Girl.